Hi everyone, my name is Martin and in today's video I want to talk about Camera Raw, how you can process your images that you took during your trips, during your holidays or maybe just random situation and maybe it happens that your image is a bit underexposed, it could be also overexposed, I believe it will answer your question. So let's start from the beginning. Why it's really worth to shoot in the RAW format? If you shoot in your image and you know you're going to process your image maybe, if you have in your summer trip and you know you want to make these images a bit better later, it's really worth to check if your digital camera has option to shoot in RAW format. If you have DSLR, this option is there for sure. So can just set this up and then when you already have the image and you want to work at home go to file browsing bridge and find the image you want to work i always use browsing bridge and the image i want to show you today is this one so i can just double hit because it's raw format or hit right and open in camera if it happened that it's jpeg format so the difference is why raw formats are better because it has more information on the image so when you want to bring up some lights it will be easier in raw file than jpeg file because it has just more information so we're going to start with this basic panel and what you can see on this image and what can i see on this image is two dark shadows so I'm just going to bring this up to the level it will make me happy. It makes me happy when I'm bringing this up up to 100 because this is just raw file from simple digital camera. So it doesn't have huge amount of information, but just enough to do this. And this is the first step I'm, I'm doing. I'm just setting up the shadows. And as you can see, this this works. Now the amount of shadows is really good. Other thing is, I usually don't manipulate with temperature when I work with portraits, etc. However, when we work with this sort of image, I'm always happy to bring up some temperature or take down some temperature. Depends on what you're looking for. You see, this image, I believe, look much better when we get this warmer. So that's why I'm getting with that. And that would be it. That's the first step I'm doing with basic panel. Another step. I'm going through one, two, three to hue saturation luminance. So what about hue? Hue is simply manipulation between the colors. If we work with greens, depends if you want to have greens more into yellow tones or rich green colors. Saturation is just about saturation. We taking up or bringing up the saturation and luminance is all about the lights that exist on specific color. So I'm starting with hue. And the highest amount of colors I have here are of course greens. I can take down the greens to make this color look more like autumn, a bit dry, and it looks great. It looks really great, I like it. Though, in this case, I'm just going to get the rich colors, just personal preference. Other thing is, there is quite decent amount of yellow color on the columns, I can see that. So of course you could manipulate with that and I'm going to go to take down a bit of these yellow tones to go more into greens. So as you can see, I believe it looks just a bit better. About other colors, they don't exist on this image that much. So I, I won't be really bothered, but remember on, it depends on your image if you have these colors or not. Next step, I'm going to saturation and once again I'm going to work with these two colors because they exist on this image. So I'm going to bring up some of the greens to make them really fully rich. I'm going to see how the yellows looks like. I'm not going to take this down, maybe just a bit of the saturation because when I take this down it's going to look depressing. Last one, luminance. This image is still a bit dark, so I'm just going to bring up more light on the greens and more light on the yellows. So simple steps, as you can see, not really much effort, don't really have to pay attention, but this image is going to look much better. 
Then I'm going back two steps into tone curve panel. We have these three sliders, they represent shadows, midtones, and highlights, which we have down over here. Of course, we can move them here to set up where we're going to define the highlights and our shadows, but I just don't want to make this complicated. I just want to bring up even more, more shadows and arcs. Keep control on this because we don't want to lose too much contrast. And about lights, you can do this a little bit on the on the greens. I'm not going to work with highlights because we don't really have that much over here. And this will be just a bit over, maybe just a little bit. And at the end, I'm going back to my basic panel and I'm going to set up a bit of contrast, which I lost in the previous step work with, working with tone curve. So that's how look my image after that quick process. That's the image I started with dark, not many details. And after, as you can see, much more life. And right now you can save this image by hitting open image and open this in Photoshop and then save this through Photoshop just as I prefer or save image right now. And it will be just ready to show to whoever you want. I really believe it was a great tutorial because it was for everyone who is just into photography. So thank you for watching and I'm going to speak to you once again in a few days coming with another Photoshop tutorial.